What's up guys, it's me Lumos Theramax and today we're here to discuss my top five most wanted lantern storylines for them to put inside the new series that we will be getting next year. And my next video is going to essentially be covering exactly what the details of those are, but I wanna give my top five recommendations in terms of what I would love to see within the context of these, even if it doesn't necessarily come out to be true. So be sure to like and subscribe down low, turn on notifications if you possibly can, as it helps out the Theromax core a ton. And with no further ado, let's get into it. All right, first things first that we have to talk about is Kyle Rayner. So for a long time, Kyle's been kind of on the back burner and honestly, he pretty much hasn't been in a lot of things in a relevant way. He's just been subjugated as like a tertiary Green Lantern, which is where DC likes to have him because he's still like the quote unquote young, immature legacy Lantern that just is kind of a goofball and is really imaginative, but never really seems to accomplish uh, as much as he did, especially during like the new Guardians run or his own like 90s run of Kyle Rayner. Now, what I would like to see would be him returning or at least attempting to, he doesn't even have to, returning to uh, a White Lantern. And I think the thing, that's what a lot of fans want because Kyle as a White Lantern is something that was really definitive of his character. It separated him from any of the other Green Lanterns that had come before him and really demonstrated to us that he had a very unique look on emotions in general, not just willpower. He wasn't limited to only experiencing the concept of willpower. And besides, like, Hal essentially has that covered. I mean, the guy is essentially, I mean, especially as a rebirth, you know, doing all the things he's doing. And we'll get into that a little bit down the way. But that being said, it would be awesome to see him travel the universe and reclaim all the separate rings that he had lost during the events of Rebirth, the last time we saw him as a White Lantern. Well, what happened to Kyle to make him lose the powers of a White Lantern? Well, he essentially tried to resurrect all the Blue Lanterns back from the dead, which also would be kind of a cool storyline to follow up on, the return of the Blue Lanterns. And whilst doing so, a figure managed to block their path and seemingly shattered um, Kyle's ring in the process. Now, we never get a direct answer as to who that is, so it'd be cool to venture into that. I mean, very clearly, uh, is it kind of implied that it's Manhattan during this period? But, I mean, it could be a variety of different things. Exploring that, I think, would be really cool. Seeing Kyle explore his emotional wavelengths once more in an attempt to achieve um, enlightenment or that same level of power would be awesome. And plus it would be cool to see Kyle go on an adventure across the universe fighting all these different lanterns who were wildly powerful to reclaim his rings back and genuinely try to uh, prove to them that he's worth their lantern ring. Like an awesome storyline to follow up on, 10 out of 10. One of my favorites and shout out to my boy Trev as uh, me and him have been talking about that for years ever since this ring had originally been shattered in the first place. Number two, I would love to see a large return of Larflees because Larflees is a fan favorite and anybody who's been repping Lanterns ever since the Jeff Johns run knows who Larflees is and every single time he shows up, he's just such a monster, man. Fighting entire cores, fighting gods, it doesn't matter. Anything that's in front of Larflees, not only does he beat the hell out of it, but it's always an entertaining ride. And I would love to see Larflees return. But now, tailing off of our last little adventure, one of the people who actually worked with Kyle Rayner to get him to be a White Lantern was actually Larflees, and it would be really cool to either see him on that same path with Kyle trying to gather a variety of rings so he can attempt, even though he would never be capable of, getting that white ring and or even eliminating any of the other cores so he can continue to do uh, whatever it is he wants to do and try to make that uh, White Lantern ring himself. And even if you don't want to take the White Lantern ring approach because it'd be too similar to what Kyle's doing, uh, it would also just be cool to see him go after something that does similar, but not quite the same. I think it'd be really cool to see him go after like the Phantom Lantern ring. I mean, you could hear somebody mention, yo, there's a ring out there that allows you to use any of the emotions that you want. And Larflees would be like, yo, hook me up with that. And not only would he kill that guy, but if he had killed that guy, they would have to tell him everything he wants to know about the subject. 
So all these things could lead him towards chasing down what we knew at some point in time, the last person we saw that had it was like Cyborg Superman, and see whatever happened with the Phantom Lantern Ring as well. Those are two really interesting side plots that uh, were just essentially lost during Rebirth. And I apologize if I keep touching back up upon Rebirth, as you'll notice this is a uh, consistent uh, trend throughout this list, is some of the best Lantern storylines uh, that could have been followed up but never did come out of Rebirth. And so Larfleet's just being in the picture again, being a main character, I think would be wildly relevant, really interesting. And I think either one of those storylines would be genuinely cool, genuinely unique. Um, whenever it comes to uh, Larflees' character. And if you think you have a really cool plot line for Larflees, tell me down low. I'm curious to hear what you guys think exactly Larflees should be doing in the future outside of his normal schemes and normal memes of operation. Um, the last thing we saw happen with Larflees outside of one singular panel where we saw him in space uh, early on, I want to say last year in the 2021 run, would be he claimed Brainiac or at least one of the many versions of Brainiac as one of his constructs and flew into space. So who knows what he could be doing in this moment. He could even be trolling around with some sort of techno empire up in space because of the things Brainiac could build for him, especially with an orange ring on Brainiac. Very interesting things to consider. Number three, I think one of the coolest things we could really have, especially as a continuation for their character, would be Hal Jordan's continued ascent into becoming a being of willpower or essentially the next Ion. In Green Lantern Rebirth, of course, once again, another notable throwback to Rebirth, we get to see Hal's slow transition, or even before Rebirth, into essentially becoming a construct, becoming Will itself, and him even losing his idea of identity as a result of that. I think bringing that back in could be really interesting to focus upon. And I, it's, it's super unfortunate we just left that all to the wayside, and especially even during that Rebirth era, we noticed him use that full construct mode less and less and less and less. And so it would be awesome to see those ideas creep back into the story and have Hal essentially losing his sense of who he is and his attempts to control that, especially with having to fight more and more and more powerful foes who are just outside of his league unless he taps into that power to save people. That idea is something that should be the focus of the Hal Jordan run because he should be getting one as time comes on here uh, in, I believe, April of next year. So if that is not something that is focused upon, we'll be losing essentially a lot of core development for Hal Jordan and we'll just be reverting him essentially back down to, um, I'm assuming, just like a strong lantern, the greatest lantern. But if he is, really is the greatest lantern, he should be a character moving into this role because Plenty of other characters, especially as rivals for him, have been doing that and either have been or currently are. I mean, last time we saw Sinestro, Sinestro devoured Parallax. Like, Hal needs to be doing something to live up to that level of power and that, that mantle uh, of being not only the greatest Lantern, but he's been that for ages. He needs to be greater than just a Lantern at this point in time. And we've been getting slight hints to that as time goes on, especially in the Green Lantern 2021 run, where he has some sort of profound connection to the green side of the spectrum and could just create a ring on the spot um, using his power. So we're seeing little bits and pieces that can kind of push us that direction, but we need a definitive 100%, yeah, he is, yeah, this is that story kind of uh, kind of a, a plot line that builds into him being more than he's he is currently and more than he's been in the last five to ten years. Number four. This one's kind of abstract, it's a little bit weird, but bear with me. So essentially Earth is a very unique place within the context of Earth Prime Earth Zero in the entire multiverse and there's two specific things I'd like to touch up on whenever it comes to what's going on with Earth, especially from like a Lantern perspective. So in the Green Lantern, Green Lantern's Rebirth run, we essentially had a story with Atrocitus rolling up to Earth where he had created a, ra a hell tower and it infected Earth with rage. And 
a lot of stuff happened as a result of that. Um, essentially, all the Red Lanterns wound up leaving, and a lot of the Reds managed to get... A lot of the people who were infected with the Red Rage were cured as a result of the Green Lanterns destroying that Hell Tower. But Atrocitus indeed hadn't failed. He had planted the seeds of something to become a Rage entity inside the planet and had grown and developed as time had went on. Following up on this story would be very relevant, but that's not entirely the plotline we can follow up on. You see... Way back in the day, all of the emotional entities that exist actually came from Earth. They were the beings who first felt emotion within essentially everything, right? And even in the 2018 run, uh, they all spawned from the white, uh, the white entity or the Traveler. And that entity, along with all the other entities, sacrificed themselves besides that one... Uh, that was placed inside the planet after this event had all been sacrificed to um, the emotional reservoirs in the source wall or beyond the source wall. Now, obviously that red rage entity is still there because that happened afterwards, but we also have like another weird moment that was never definitively explained in the Justice League, I wanna say it was the 2018 run, where the invisible spectrum wielded by Sinestro came down on the Justice League and all these other characters. And we just never, there, there's this moment where in order to throw off Umbrax, the entity that is the invisible spectrum, the Earth, the planet, just creates this huge White Lantern logo on it. And that keeps away a lot of the mischievous shit that Sinestro was doing and even defends the planet. There's no reason for a White Lantern. There's no White Lantern on the planet. The Traveler is no longer there. Or the, the White Entity of life is no longer there. What is going on with that? Now, you could probably argue, hey, maybe there... Earth is a beacon of life, which is true contextually, but there needs that's not enough of an explanation. So what all entities still exist on Earth, or are there new emotional entities being created on Earth, um, even including a life entity? I think those things could all be really interesting plot lines to follow up on. So like we have a rage entity, we have a life entity, albeit I'm assuming at some sort of younger stage to replace all the ones we'd already lost. Um, so those would all be really interesting uh, stories to follow up on and I look forward, I really, really, really hope that we get more entity-like content and to follow up with our last one, maybe Hal is the representation of Will that has also come from Earth. So you could even tie those plot lines in with one another. Think about it. And for number five, probably the least known and probably least wanted by the majority of people, but dude, I'm just a really curious person. I can't help it. So Kelly Quintella is a very young lantern. She's not been around for very long, but she's a young girl who essentially got some sort of mysterious gauntlet. And it's very unclear as to exactly where this thing had come from. And the Green Lantern 2021 run and Future State both gave us some really interesting potential plot lines to be followed up with her that I think need attention, okay? Because that gauntlet has statements of drawing directly on the bleed, it has statements of being very similar to Krona's gauntlet. I mean, there's just a lot going on with that that has yet to be explained entirely as far as my knowledge goes. and. I want to know who created that thing. And there was a really cool Future State story that had her involved where she went with Mogo and was trying to go to the origin of wherever this, uh, the energy that had created this gauntlet was at. And they had to go through a dark sector to get there, but the central power battery turned off. And so she was essentially left alone where Mogo couldn't do anything inside a sector where like these, these, uh, uh, like shadow creatures essentially lived. And she was on Mogo defending Mogo with when while he's powerless. And she felt very powerless because she's got this wildly powerful gauntlet, but it only works with willpower. And she's in like the worst case scenario humanly imaginable. So Mogo is essentially giving talking to her and giving her advice on what it is to be a lantern and how she can overcome those fears and be the person that she wants to be because she's always wanted to be a superhero. And so I think that storyline was amazing and it's a shame we never followed up on that. I want to know the origins of whoever created that gauntlet and how she got it because there's no reason for somebody to just randomly up and come across one of the most powerful artifacts in the universe. To give you an idea, 
the last time Hal Jordan put on that thing, it not only did it almost killed him, but basically it was turning him into Will itself. They it, Hal affected the gauntlet, but the gauntlet affected him and turned him into something more. So this is not that gauntlet, but it's something that is compared to it. And clearly do we still have that gauntlet, uh, the Krona's gauntlet, under wraps after the Rebirth storyline. So who knows? It could be another Rogue Guardian or who knows? After the hands created everything or returned everything back to normal during the events of Death Metal, what if Krona had come back and is still memeing and plans to use her for whatever nefarious purposes that he wants? Even if it's like an infiltrator uh, within their ranks or even a more advanced version of that uh, sentient gauntlet that Hal had that can be weaponized against the core. There's a lot of unanswered questions with Kelly, Quintel, uh, Kelly Quintella's character and I really want to figure them out. That being said, be sure to tell me what you guys think of all of my uh, potential suggestions as well as I want you to hit me with your own down low. Tell me what you guys think would be the best possible storyline for the Lanterns to follow up on from here on out. And who knows, if some of them are amazing, I'll even cover them in my next video, dude. I, I swear, best one that I get, I will pin in the comments for sure. So hit me with your best suggestions and I really look forward to it. But that being said, uh, that's pretty much it for here. If you guys have anything else you wanted to talk or discuss about, I'm going to be doing more of these vlog style videos from now on. Be sure to let me know. Like I said earlier, like and subscribe down low. And I guess that'll be all today, Lanterns. Later.